Plenty of goals, setting off and torrential rain. Typical afternoon at Ewa Park. Oh, and three points. That's right folks, back once again with another match review. And yes, finally success and a cracking performance to say the very least. Blackburn coming out 3-0 winners over Portsmouth. Now before I get stuck into it, hit that subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now let's get straight into the thick of things. Three cracking goals on the afternoon. One from uh, Bradley Dack, 38th minute. Danny Graham in the second half, 58th minute. And Craig Conway finishing off a cracking afternoon, the 90th minute in the torrential rain. However, with some good news, there's always a bit of bad news. And Dominic Samuel get himself sent off on the 87th minute. Uh, unfortunately, I've not seen the incident. Uh, I, watched the, I watched the game on iFollow and it kind of lagged out a little bit. So I'm trying to wait for the highlights on that one. But uh, all the same, he's going to be out for at least three games. So that's a bit of a pickle he's going to find himself in. Maybe, just maybe, it'll give uh, the opportunity for Joe Nuttall to step up to the plate. Maybe at least get himself on the bench. But today, Rovers gave a cracking performance for themselves. One the fans have been waiting for all season. I think we, you know, it eclipses the performance, I think, that we, we, we gave when we took on MK Dons at Ewa Park. Um, so performance of the season so far for Rovers, in my eyes. Uh, we looked a lot better. We, we threatened more. Uh, in fact, let's jump straight into it and have a look at the statistics. Ten shots uh, on the day, six of them on target, and three of them went in the back of the net. 53% possession for Rovers, 47 for Portsmouth. On their uh, side of the field, they only got seven shots, three on target. David Roy was pretty safe and sturdy uh, in between the sticks. Three corners for Rovers, two for Portsmouth. Here's a recap of Pompey's lineup: McGee, Thompson, Clark. Burgess, Donahue, Close, O'Keefe, Lowe, Bennett, Hawkins, and Kennedy. And that Bennett, that's Elliot's brother. We'll talk more about more, we'll talk more about that in just a second. Rovers, Raya and Goal, Nayimbi, Paul Downing came back into the lineup. Charlie Mulgrew, Derek Williams, Harry Chapman got his start, and he played a blinder. Richard Smallwood, the commander in chief, I feel, in the centre of our midfield. I've never lost my my belief in Smallwood, but uh, today he was outstanding. Whittingham also did himself uh, a lot of good, and uh, and he's showing, uh, he's starting to show this division what he's made of. Elliot Bennett full of running, Bradley Dack with a goal, Danny Graham with a goal. Here's what I thought of their performances. Raya safe as houses with six. Raya Nayimbi, I thought he had a cracking afternoon on the right-hand side, his preferred role. If you went back to my preview, square pegs and squ in round holes doesn't work out, Tony. Today you got it spot on. Ryan Nimby right back, Downing at centre back. He, him and Charlie Morgan seem very uh, a good a good fit for each other. Downing obviously centre back. Charlie Morgan, he's more of a sweeper. I feel. I think he's got a sweeper sort of mentality. Um, you know, last man at the back. Let's down and do a lot more of the running. Uh, and when it when it come, when it matters, Charlie Mulgrew steps forward for a set piece or whatever. He's very calm and composed was Charlie Mulgrew tonight or this after or, or, or today. Uh, Williams also full of running on on the left hand side into midfield. Harry Chapman got an eight for me. I thought he was outstanding. He had a, obviously his defensive uh, duties are not the greatest, but going forward probably the best player in his position in the league. Uh, Smallwood, again, probably the best defensive midfielder in the league. And we have him. And he, to be honest with you, he's, he's been very consistent, Smallwood. He might have had a couple of, of sixes so far in my eyes this season, but he's pretty solid. And I feel he still is my number one name on the sheet. Peter Whittingham, as I said, had a cracking afternoon. Elliot Bennett, full of running always. He gets a seven. Bradley Dack, two for two for him. Danny Graham, also a seven. Um, he did a lot of the donkey work up front, a lot of the hold-up play. And he gave Mowbray food for thought when he stuck the ball in the back of the net. So that's a little bit of what I have to say. I'll probably give you a lot more further on in the, in the show. But let's have a listen to what the gaff had to say about the match and the build-up to the big one against Wigan Athletic next weekend. Yeah, I think so. I think it was a performance that we've been looking for. I think... Um Score some goals. It's good for the supporters. Good for the players' confidence. Um, 
that's I think we got our just rewards today. I thought we started the game really well. I thought we were really positive and created chances. We should have scored a few more first half. To be honest, there were some great chances, and it felt like it was going to be one of them days again. Um, but so we, we stand in here three 0 It's it's good enough. Um, I thought there were lots of different qualities shown today. Some really good slick football for staff, and then some real fighting qualities, battling qualities. Second half, I don't think we showed any fear. We don't think we sat in and defended. We thought we always looked like we could score some more goals. So hopefully, it's a you know a start of um, of a trend that we can score more than the odd goal in games. And yet, you know, what was the difference today? They came and had a go. Really, they didn't come and sit in and make life difficult. They were a threat we'd prepared for them having a, a counter-attack threat yeah, Elliot's brother you know Carl is, is a sharp little quick footballer who sits behind the striker and was always a, a menace but uh, we saw that threat off today and we got the right result yeah ideally I think uh, listen we, we try and score right from the kickoff we're always talking about start fast put them on the back foot let's see if we can get shots away early and um, I think with this team to, to get the first goal it gives us a fantastic chance to win the match and um, the back four, whilst we talk about three now, I think the back four are looking really strong at the moment. I think, um, you know, the last couple of games, I'd have to say, I, you have to give Paul down in a special mention. I think he's had four games, he had four clean sheets. Um, looks very assured, composed alongside uh, alongside Charlie. Um, helps, as I've talked in the past, gets the team up the pitch a bit higher than what we've been playing. Helps the midfield be able to press and close a bit more, helps the strikers and. Um, you know, helps us win the ball back earlier in, 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 the, in their build-up. So um, yeah, I think good signs today. You know, I still sit here frustrated about Tuesday night and not winning a game. I'd, I'd probably had more chances Tuesday than we did today. You know, we didn't take them, didn't finish them off. But um, you can only deal with the next game, and, and it was good to get the three points and, and keep going. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I'm delighted for Bradley and obviously for Danny. Um, you know, been working hard with Danny on his fitness and on his work rate and uh, you know undoubtedly he can finish we know that it and it, it, what he did today he almost passes it into the net you know whereas other people don't so we know that and yet it is a balance you know the team you have to run and work and chase in, in modern day football it's um it's an athletic game so he's working extremely hard he got his benefits today his rewards helped the team win the football match um as i said bradley delighted for him and, and for craig who's I would have been disappointed not to start the game today. That's that's fine. He came to see me this week and said that he's feeling hundred percent again after he, you know he had, he had a couple of knocks. His his hip was really sore and had trouble, and uh, but he's feeling fit again. And um, you know he's obviously a big player for us moving forward. Delighted that he scored and um, and helped us see the game out. Yeah, maybe. But as I would say that the opposition are going to dictate on the strikers that we play. I mean. If we're playing away from home and teams are pressing us really high, sometimes Samuel, I know Samuel's obviously got himself sent off there and won't be playing for the next three games, but um, the reasoning behind it is, is when teams are playing high up the pitch, you need to run, you need speed in behind really, and you know even a clearance can put you away. So um, you know, Danny will understand as we move forward. Sometimes when we're playing against a block like we did Tuesday of, of nine men behind the ball, it's easier to sometimes to try and instead of passing through it, it's rather go over the top of it and into a big centre forward who's got body strength. And so we'll utilise them all. You know, and Tonneson didn't play today because he played the last two matches you know, in a three-game week, and um, they'll all play their part. You know, with the sending off, it potentially promotes Nuttall forward into the group now, and um, so we'll. we'll Keep going, keep pushing on. I think the key when you look at the table, shows be winning again, Wigan winning again, is is to keep in touch, and we will get stronger. And um, when, the, when it all gels together, hopefully we are in striking distance, and we have to hunt these teams down as the season unfolds. Well, I just, I just, I was a bit annoyed because I felt the referee should have dealt with the incident before the incident got to the stage where he got sent off. And yet, there's no, I can't I stand here and defend him. You can't go kicking people on the pitch as he did. He's apologised in there. Um, He'll get disciplined for that because we can't win without oh, main centre forward really for the next three games and we games we have to try and win. So um, you know, hugely frustrating. Um, and yet I think the officials should have. You know, he was grabbed, he was held back, he was blocked about three or four times before lashing out. But I, I can't condone him lashing out. It's, you know, he'll be disciplined and because um, the team will suffer without him. It sets it up nicely this result today though for Wigan away next week, which will be a big game as you alluded to with the table. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've well, got to go there and be confident and take it to them now. And uh, but I would say they are a good side. I've watched them once or twice this year. They've got some very technical, good players. 
I know the manager well. He likes to play forward and attractive football. And um, yeah, so that will be our strongest, biggest test, I think, of the year. It's not going to be defining for us, but it would be great to go there and get a positive result, of course. That's what the careful had to say. This is what's been happening on social media. First up, here's some of the players. Ryan Nambi said, great performance from the lads. Three points, check marks, 3 nil win, check mark, clean sheet, check mark, and a bit of a fist pump. Bradley Dax, short and sweet, enjoy your weekend at Rovers, and a picture of the lads celebrating with Dak after his goal. Elliot Bennett, special day, three points, there he is with his brother. Commiserations to him, but uh, obviously Elliot Bennett's going to be uh, top dog out of those two bad boys. But uh, much respect to, to, to his brother. Uh, unfortunately, they're going back home with zero points, and we need to take all three. Now off to the fans. Emma Neville said, Ward didn't play and we won. Funny that. Oliver Wetton said on the Rovers Facebook page, Peter Whittingham, in my opinion, was our best player today. He was a good player amongst a, a bunch of other good players. It was hard to, uh, to, to for me to decide who was man of the match. Obviously, I think Bradley Dack got the, got the, got the honour for this afternoon. But to be honest with you, if I had to give a man of the match... Well, probably would have been the football pitch. That's my uh, take on it. Deciding factor in the end result. It was like watching uh, two teams on, on, a, on a sheet of ice. Sliding everywhere. Uh, it was very sloppy. Um, but it, it made for a cracking afternoon. Especially if you're in a comfortable position, which Rovers were. Tuning all up at the time when, when really the floodgates opened and, and the heavens uh, unleashed hey, the gallons and gallons of water onto the pitch. Um, but Rovers took advantage of it. Obviously, Pompey were trying to get themselves back into it, which which opened up the play a little bit, and Rovers took advantage. Conway with his fresh legs, and he got a cracking goal. We'll talk more about that goal in just a tit bit. Anyway, Thomas Evans on the one. Jack Walker, Blackburn Rovers page, says, Dak, 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 man of the match, match, match. Also, David Cockle on the Rovers webpage says, where's all the Mowbray outposts? And there's a four little nuggets of poop. Samuel Small says on the Rovers Facebook page, Samuel sent off Nuttall on bench for next game. That would be something. And that he could take his chance um, against Wigan. Woo, that would be a belter. Anyway, further down uh, the uh, on Twitter, uh, Elliot Kinsella says, just like the Premiership days. And he gives a bit of a smiley face. Blue, white, blue, white, blue, white. California Rover. Says, big game next week. Got to start with the same team. Well played, Rovers. Joseph Mills. Boom. Back in the playoff spots with two games in hand. Idol Musa says, get in you, Rovers. Brilliant victory at last. Come on, you blues. And the energy check, our new back of the shirt sponsors, says, simply amazing. Well done, Rovers. Proud to be partnering with a great club. As for Pompey fans, not such a good trip for them on the way back down south. Poor display all round. They wanted to win far more than we did. Bullied yet again. Dan Knight said, We are too easy to beat away from home. Too often this season, teams aren't better than us. We are just shitter than them and lose the match. And Luke Ellis says, I'm not going to moan, but that was a generally terrible performance from us. We have to play defensive away from home and be expansive at Fratton Park. And Lee Hamilton says it all. I don't know. I don't know how big this campaign is right now, but they, he's saying jack it out. I think Jack is the decent manager. Uh, he did wonders with Wolves, I think, in this division. Got them promoted, and they got them in decent shape in the championship. Um, it all fell through with him. I think at Rotherham didn't really work out. Um, Portsmouth for a good side. They, I think they might have got ahead, ahead of themselves at the start of the season, saying they're going to go back-to-back -back promotions. The momentum could have been with them, but looking at the table right now, so it was, it was Portsmouth, Blackpool and Doncaster. And currently, it's the playoff winners, Blackpool, in better position than Portsmouth and Doncaster. But I think Portsmouth are probably around about where they're going to finish. Uh, maybe top 10, but that's just me. Oh, and just before I move on to the next segment, there was this butte. Look at this, there's Conway's goal. Courtesy of somebody on, on Twitter. And check out the poor steward. There he goes. Poor bugger. Falls over his face. He is now gone viral. Meanwhile, let's take a look around the ground. See what's been happening around League One. Shrewsbury back to winning ways once again. Continue their 
um, push to the top of the table. First spot, and they're sitting there quite comfortably. Two points clear of second place Wigan, who beat Gary Bowyer's Blackpool 3-1. That's our next opponents, Wigan Athletic. Bradford City, they fell to a 1-0 defeat to at home to Charlton. MK Dons and newly appointed manager Richie Wellens at Oldham. 4-4 score draw wherever they play. And Gillingham Northampton, bottom of the table scrap. Northampton come out with all three points. And Plymouth Argyle, the team that we pressed so hard during the week, come out with a 1-0 away victory at AFC Wimbledon. That's your pick of your results. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. Make sure you head over to my YouTube channel. Give me a like for this video and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Cracking result by the boys. Uh, momentum hopefully is shifting. Uh, we need to take the positives from this game, which was fluid attacking football. And obviously the myth that Chapman is a sub, uh, super sub is probably dead and buried now. He did the business. Was He, he run him ragged for 70 minutes, not 20 minutes which was, was great to see. Again, his defensive qualities aren't the greatest. Bradley Dack uh, is a terror. He's a nightmare. He, he likes to get in, in defenders' faces and, and do his bit. Um, cracking supporting role for him, uh, supporting uh, Danny Graham. I know we're going to Wigan next. I'm going to talk much, much more about Wigan in the preview uh, video, which will be on midweek uh, in a few days. So stand by for that bad boy. Um, but yes, I think we do need to be a little bit more cautious. I would take a point at uh, at Wigan but you know there's no question or there's no doubt that we can get three points but to be safe I'll take a point so I'm gonna leave it there I am on Twitter SoundCloud Facebook and iTunes if you want to check me out on the go but until next time thumbs up subscribe ciao for now thanks again for watching please like share and most importantly hit that subscribe button it'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers but if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.